what I thought about as I was driving down the road today is I'm just going to make it short and sweet. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, and always acknowledge him, and he will guide your path. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll call to order the, uh, what's today's date? The 25th? Oh, the 26th. Today? 20th. 26th. Clay County School Board Agenda Review Workshop, February 26th, yes, 2012. Okay, I will... <laughs> I was know where I was. Two years off, Carol. Oh, you said 2012. 2019. 12. <laughs> Seven years off. <laughs> I'm younger. Thank you. <laughs> this would be my 50th birthday. It's been, a, it's been a tough morning. Okay, I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Okay, thank you. Welcome to 2012. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. I don't know what you were on this back, day. Back to the future. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, thank you and welcome. Uh, we'll start off with, um, with uh, school. We have a uh, recognition, school recognition with check uh, presentation from Clay County Education Foundation. We'll go into our agenda. C1 will be our minutes for workshop special meeting for January 29th and hearing and regular meeting for February the 7th, 2019. C2 will be our proclamation for the fair. Uh, this year they will not be attending. They just want us to, uh, to acknowledge it and then we will take it to them. C3 is a 2019-2020 employee calendar. This was approved in May. Yeah. However, there was, we found an error with elementary ISS teachers' uh, assistants. They are paid 183 days uh, a year. We had them working 184 days, and historically they do not work the last day of school. So we, moved, we gave them the second to last day of school off as well in order to comply with the number of days that they are working. Can I ask a quick question about that calendar? Yes, ma'am. I was confused because it says like January 1st, 3rd, 5th, and I thought that is, that this is the calendar that we're ending before Memorial Day, right? Mm, or is that no, the next that's calendar? No, that's in 21. Thank right. you. That's what confused 21. me. Never mind. Yeah. Well, it's okay. in advance. Yes. So we're bringing that back for adjustments. C4. C4 is a personnel consent agenda. On this consent agenda, you will see a number of job descriptions. The first one will be for um, uh, it, it will be for police officers, school police officers. You will see a uh, school police sergeant. You will see a lieutenant for training and an overall lieutenant for the police department. Nothing instructional. Nothing administrative. C5, we, this is the 2018-2019 salary schedule. We bring this back because we had a number of positions that we have added, and we want to make sure that's reflective within the schedule. We added the executive director for Clay County Foundation. We added a director of operations um, through Director 1. We also added Director 1, future recommendation for chief of police, and then also the executive secretary for the school board attorney. And that's just updating those positions recently added. C6 is a proclamation for Teacher Appreciation Week, which is May the 6th to the 10th. Every week's Teacher Appreciation Week, but we'll celebrate it this week here locally. And then on May the 7th will be the actual day that we celebrate in Clay. I think there's a day for nurses, too, that falls somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. You might we want to look. look at that because yeah, we normally yeah. recognize nurses, It's too. usually the same week. Because we do, like, counselors are in the, the and fall. And, Mr. Davis, that was C5. Oh, sorry, C5. <laughs> what was it? C6. And is there a, um, I'm going to ask oh, it now agenda. because we it miss it every allocation year. Allocation changes are C6. Oh, Support sorry. personnel, don't, don't they fall under a week mm -hmm. somewhere? I can look at we, C6. We, we've missed it uh, last year. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And the year before. I'll look at it. Nurses check on. Nurses and support. Nurses and support. We have support coming up. Well, C7, I think it's support. That's what administrative professional. That's my That's not Oh. That's, never mind, I was on the wrong thing. Sure, mm -hmm. it covers bus drivers, mm -hmm. cafeteria. I'll check. Mm -hmm. I think that that's inclusive. That's support. Give Miss Smith a call. So yeah, like right. C seven is Administrative Professionals Week. This is um, this identifies uh, for May. I mean April twenty second to the twenty sixth, along with the day identifying as April the twenty fourth. And I will check them. And I believe that's our support. C8 is approval of out of tra of out of county travel. This mm -hmm. is for K12 academics. We have FCC LA, which is going on to competitions. We have choir. We have weightlifting. We Didn't have. Didn't she win state? 
Who? The woman who went, the young lady who went to state. Weightlifting? Weightlifting. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, from Oakley. She went uh, first Oakley. in state, yes. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah Perez. Oh, that was actually Fleming Island, I think, but yes. Perez, Perez won. won. She did one state. And I thought. She She's been strong the last few years. <laughs> She's strong. Uh, we have NJROTC, thespians, and also we have softball traveling as well. C9 is our Bradford County uh, Articulation Agreement that uh, impacts uh, McRae, Keystone Elementary, Keystone uh, Heights Junior Senior High School. Just gives them accessibility to, um, to, to our schools. I do have a question on that. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you look down at uh, right near the bottom okay. about the principal, however, if the principal stress states that they have room available, the Bradford students will be con considered. So is that all, all three schools, just one school, or... Because I know Keystone Elementary is... Yeah, they're packed, packed out. Packed. Yeah, so, so it's all three schools. So we want to make certain that, that we, all three schools identify whether or not they have uh, seats available. Mm -hmm. And that's working collectively with um, with our fish reporting to make sure they have actual seats. If they do, then we open and allow them to internal candidate uh, residents first, and then they'll have that articulation for second tier. Okay. Uh, the other question I have on that is, um, uh, is there some type of um, criteria they use when they're doing that? Because I know when I, you know, it was such a, when I was assistant principal, it was very difficult, and we had them, you know, we made sure the child right. was their discipline. Their, yeah, good standings, and academic and good standings, yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. And we can we can reiterate that to, to leaders to make sure they look at academics, attendance, and behavior history to make sure that they are on the right track to be successful. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. C10 is approval of um, uh, approval to uh, advertise um, school board policy 4.29 visits to our schools. This is us uh, looking at our our school visits for pers external personnel for coming in. We're looking at uh, identifying a number of quantifiers by adding uh, the visitors must have the volunteer registration before they come and visit our schools and also walk through our classrooms and observe our classrooms instruction. They must identify 48 hours in advance to our teachers and to our administration before they come into our classrooms. They have to have school admin can limit the frequency or the length to up to two hours to visit in our, in our classrooms. And also we have uh, school admin shall comply with any uh, contractual language that's, that's uh, that we currently have with CCEA. And the last one is to make certain that if anyone disrupts the environment, then they will potentially be removed from that environment mm -hmm. if there's any type of disruption. So all this to say we, we want individuals to be a part of, um, of our school district and be a part of our classrooms. But I think we've got to have uh, some uh, criteria to identify you know, what limitations may be so we do not disrupt the educational process. And we also protect our teachers and our students. Everything in red was new. Everything mm -hmm. in red is new. That is... From past experience, thank you. <laughs> well, we've, we've I mean, done, we've done, parents we've done that some come work. in and just sit. Yeah, let's say we've done some know? work with, uh, you know, yeah. uh, Miss <laughs> Bayes, yeah. Miss O'Connor, Miss Piva. And um, so we, this has probably been on, on and Mr. Bickner, thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. Probably for the last two months, I think this has been something we've been kicking around trying to get it right. Good. So we just, you know, as much as I'd love to go shadow my daughter, I don't want to be there every single day to disrupt but, the environment. But there are pe there are parents who do, and I'm they, thinking yeah. the younger kids yeah. and the ones that just I don't think you're teaching my child right type parent. That's and right. I hate to say it that way, but there are a lot of folks who want to hover, yes, and it's really important to give them space. The other concern I have about that is uh, I'll just give you an example that came to my attention: um, a gentleman who does uh, Santa at Keystone Elementary School said. You know what, we fill out all this paperwork for something they've invited me to, a uh, fundraiser yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. donating my time to, yeah. and now i got to fill out all this stuff in order to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's, it does create a little bit of a, yeah. you know, he said, can right. I get all this? <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and we appreciate their time, but yeah. everyone should fill out the document, mm -hmm. volunteer registration forms. I mean, that's, that's just safety. That's a priority. I mean, well, and, and maybe they should do plan it in advance so they can make sure they get all that, that stuff done yeah. and so that, that we can make sure that they can be around kids. I'm sure this mm -hmm. individual is a great person, oh, yeah. but we do want to make sure we cover and this. Passes the yeah, no, LA before the rest right. of us know. would. But anyway, the why are they like, there for year to year? I think so. I think once they're in the system, they should, yeah. they, they should be. Yeah. Um, they, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember having to do that at Fleming Island High just as a volunteer parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and got a badge. You can't be too safe. 
All right. C11 is our English language learner's plan. Every year we're required to develop a plan to address uh, students with, uh, with uh, the English language learner. So this is a plan to address their needs and talk about intervisions and supports and how we'll do to, to better educate them and what assessments will be extended to them to help them be successful and close any potential gaps that may exist. Um, proposed allocation changes for 1819. We have two. We have one. Uh, uh, we have a number of ESOL students. Uh, we had an increase in ESOL students at Thunderbolt, so we will provide a e an ESOL assistant to better assist our learners. And then also at um, OVE health assistance. Right now, that uh, there's definitely a need through um, through ESC to provide additional assistance, which will be um, funded through federal funding and IDEA. All right, for the fun one, proposed allocations, allocations for 1920 school year. Each of you have a packet in front of you, and um, just push if you'll get that PowerPoint up. And and I have also, sorry, I should this out. This is the PowerPoint that I'll go through. So you'll have for your records. Um, here we go. Let me pass those two out. I'll get one this one. Oh yes. So the allocation packet this year, um, overall, uh, I'll go through this uh, PowerPoint and talk about uh, potential changes. Let's make sure this is on. Maybe it could be operator error. Mm -hmm. Always. You can, if you can just push the button, <laughs> push enter. <laughs> That'll work. Just press enter. It's going to come up or not. Do something. Here. I don't know. Well, this, oh, here we go. So overall, mm -hmm. our basis for our project, you know, our, our our body count, not FTE count projections, were based on a number of things, and that's for us working with operations and informational services to really determine uh, the uh, schools projecting for the 19 and 20 school year. We used U.S. Census data. We looked at um, uh, generation rates were through impact fee studies. We looked at projected, um, you know, information in regards to our GIS mapping software. We looked at Clay County's planning commission and also our community, our, our county's development review board, and used number data, number of um, data from different uh, sources, including focus to see the progression of students. You can change the next one. Sorry. As it, um, as it looks for right now, our projections, uh, again, this is not FTE, this is body counts. We are projected to lose nine students in the elementary uh, world, which um, I think that we will overcome that through our uh, controlled open enrollment because we have over 500 students that have taken advantage of that. We see an uptick in junior high school students for next year of 96, and we see an uptick of high school students, 234, and we see an uptick of uh, alternative settings, whether it be Charter, AMI, PACE, and FLICA of 173 students um, per, per our projection numbers. That number could go up or it could go down. With a total of 459 uh, overall for the school districts in, in these elements. So we use this number to create our staff allocation plans for the, uh, night, I should say, sorry, 1920, the, the second column. Can we go to the next one? I'll fix that. As relates to the allocation model, uh, right now in elementary, one thing we, d we did do is um, for assistant principals, we have 14 schools that have 11 month assistant principals. So what we did, we made that whole where we could have uh, take those 14 individuals and transition them to 12 months. And that's so that we can have, you know, operational, you know, someone on site to better assist with operations, to better assist with schedules, to better assist with, uh, with instructional materials, uh, transportation. And of those uh, 14 schools, that cost is around $119,000. Um, as it relates to the uh, uh, system principal 11 month for student for schools that have 901 plus FTE, they, we changed that to 750, and we only changed that to be in compliance. It doesn't impact any schools or any additional positions or funding connected to that. We just made sure that what we are actually doing in our schools reflect in our model and our plan. So you're telling me that all of the elementary schools will now have 12 month assistant principals? They will have one 12 month. One, I mean, at yes, least one 12 yes, month assistant So principal. Yes, ma'am. So we can be pure. Because they do the work anyway, all 12 months. It's, mm -hmm. it's, we, they do. I mean, they. And for $119,000, and we'll find that money to be able to make it holistic. There's, I mean, they're always there, anyways. Yeah. And so the additional 11 month, we just fixed that model from 901 to 750, and that doesn't have any impact on personnel or funding. 
Uh, school counselors, one thing that we did do is um, we made school counselors whole. We had uh, a few schools that had .8s. It just didn't really make sense. So we changed the model to, uh, to make sure it's holistic, and that will impact Discovery Oaks. It will impact Keystone Heights Elementary School, and it will impact Wilkinson Elementary School, um, Wilkinson Elementary School as well. So they'll go from a 1.8 to actually 2 to have on the, those sites. And actually, to be honest with you, all those schools really could use another a full-time uh, school counselor within those, uh, especially two of the three within the schools. Uh, one thing we did change on the allocation plan, we have identified whether or not a school should have a registered nurse at 10 month or a LPN at 9 or 10 month. We put RN or LPN because we're just having trouble trying to find mm -hmm. someone, so we're giving them options. We are pushing to make certain schools try to hire RNs first. However, if they can't and the, and the job creates a vacancy for a period of time, then we're, we're going to we'll identify a time period and they can transition to potentially hire an LPN. How many schools do we have RNs versus LPNs? I can, I can find that out. Yeah. Do you know if, um, excuse me, Montclair Elementary, their nurse is not a full-time. She's like a point six or point, point eight. Do you know if that's been changed? We can look at, I can look at that as well. Montclair. Do you remember Montclair's nurse, what it was? Um, I think they cut the amounts of the allocations. We can look in that, and I'll find out number of RNs we're sending at schools. They have one, and it used to be a full day, and then it was swapped with a yeah. front-end secretary. That was a point six. Yeah. And we can... But they really need a point, a, okay. a point, it's eight. A point eight. They need They need that extra. It's a point eight now? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's every day. Kids are there, right? It's every day. Often yeah. they're point yeah. eights to yeah. the chair. Yeah. They're they're often point eights because that's a, a preference for the person filling the position in terms of yeah. It's not in this case. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know that specifically. Yeah, it's and not in this case. It was we get these wonky you know, sort of parts, right? Mm -hmm. Personnel for consistency. We'll see what we can see. I'm sure it doesn't so, cost much to change that, but I think it's something that should be looked at. Yes, okay, Miss Bella. I was just going to ask a quick question about the high schools. So within the high schools, in using oh I'm sorry we're not there yet I apologize. That's <laughs> okay. You can ask. But I'm I'm looking at some of the numbers. Um, definitely health assistance over a thousand. Yeah. Yes, and I'm almost sorry. tempted to say can we say nine hundred about because there's really only <coughs> one elementary school well, there's gonna that be... has nine hundred plus. So Unless right, that was changed dramatically. So the next step was to add health assistance for a thousand plus FTE. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be your uh, OVE, which continues to expand right. your um, your PO, which mm -hmm. continues to expand your Pattersons and your uh, Tynes. And I'm so, looking at Thunderbolt at 953. Yeah, they're close to it. Mm, you know, I'm, yeah, and I'm they're close. Just throwing well, that we, out. We just used. I mean, we can look at that. Uh, we just used a thousand number because uh, we see at those schools that they're continue to to have you know continue to grow. We wanted to have additional assistance on and campus. And within the high schools. Do we have the coverage in the high schools that we need for those schools that are above 2,000? I mean, we've got a school that's 2,500. We can we can look at that as well. And that's I'm just yes, saying the more. What are the credentials coverage. for a health assistant? I can I can find that out, Mr. Mr. Rossi. Any assistance for health ass assistant credentials? Health assistant. I can get the job description and send it to you. But what you know? She said, "What is the job? The requirements for a health assistant?" Just just a high school diploma and first aid and CPR. Okay. All right, okay that works. All right, so junior high, what we have done as well is transition to make sure the model is um, reflective for what we currently have, uh, reference to a 12-month employee assistant principal, and we changed it from 1,400 to 1,100. We do have one school that, um, that already has three, uh, three assistant principals, which is like Asbury Junior High School, and they have a, a large number of schools, mm -hmm. but this will only impact adding one, which would be uh, Oak Leaf Junior High School. Mr. Davis. Yes, ma'am. I don't mean to backtrack, but just brainstorming here. If we're having trouble um, filling RN, LPN, and health assistant positions, it might be an opportunity to partner with, like, St. John's River State College since they have a nursing school. Okay. Um, there may be an opportunity for them to get clinical hours or, you know, that sort of thing and, and also help us out with filling our clinics. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate it. So this, uh, this, 
this AP will, um, we will just uh, make sure the models hold with Lake Asbury and Junior High School, and then it will impact uh, Oak Leaf Junior High School. Oak Leaf Junior High School, even though we took a grade level out, continues to grow and, and uh, within that area. So they had more stu students than we thought, and uh, that would help uh, as well. Uh, once again, if we look at the, uh, the school counselor, we, we are moving school counselors from 10 month to 11 month in junior high schools. That's going to help tremendously with uh, providing additional mental health services and also scheduling uh, on campus to have accessibility. Um, and that number is, is I think it's only around $30,000 to do that, bless you. $30,000 to do that, to have additional supports on campus. And then, um, and then just changing the model for school counselors. With that said, once you get one that's 11 month, we change the 10-month the school counselor to reflect 11 month and, and created that by FTE at the school so they can have continued supports at the school. And the road to that one, there's, I don't think there's much of a cost. Excuse me. And the same thing with the RN registered nurse uh, location there. Um, we'll, we'll identify a time frame. And then in high school, mm -hmm. it, it remained the same. Mm -hmm. And you see that uh, we'll continue, well, we can look at those schools that are over 2,000 mm -hmm. to determine if they need additional assistance. There may be an opportunity, too, with kind of what we're doing with our teachers' assistants, helping them get their bachelor's degree right. to become teachers. You might be able to do some sort of incentive with your LPNs right. to help them that do through our partnership with St. John's to get their I think it's good, yeah. Their BSN. Mm -hmm. they can't, I don't or, think no. they get a BSN, but they can yeah. become a registered nurse right. through St. John's. Oh, I see. okay. Miss mm -hmm. Bush. Mm -hmm. So what we look at in the elementary, we have, uh, you see that it, it's a minus uh, 3.5 instructional. Uh, that is uh, totally uh, linked to reading <coughs> categorical, bringing some of the, uh, the, coachy, the, the coaches that are, ha there are, it's a half of coach that we spend through the reading categorical schools, bringing them back. Uh, bring them back to the district level so we can have better tiers of support. Um, so we get, so not particular schools get supports, but now we can range and have better supports across the district. Uh, you see that we're adding some ESE, ESE instructional teachers to better serve our students. Uh, we're adding uh, 4.8 support staff. Um, we have some more ESE supports, and then we're at the, that model changed to 1.6 of, of a counselor. Um, we, we see here that we will add a .5 teacher to uh, Clay Hill for their VPK program and that the, the, the school counselors that will be impacted will be uh, Discovery Oaks, Wilkinson Elementary to make whole, and then we're going to add a, a counselor at Grove Park. Um, if you go to the next one, in the junior, you need to go back. I was just going to say you said added one custodian based on size and need. That's correct. And. Uh, are we going to be able to find where, that? where is that? That's, that's at, uh, no ma'am, that's at uh, Patterson is the greatest need Patterson, that we have. Mm -hmm. It's really big school and they've got a, a lot going on. Are so. we going to be able to find another custodian? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we, I know that we've needed them this year. Right, they're, I mean, they're the, the top for the, the actual need as of right now. And you sure? and I talked, discussed about a custodian for yeah. the two elementary You know what, that is, uh, right. Dr. Kemp and that is correct, and thank you for reminding me. We, we looked at potentially having a add an additional one to Keystone High School and Keystone Elementary since they're connected campuses to potentially share for for half a day to uh, because of uh, because of needs and they do have a lot of property to cover. Well, not only that, but they have where most schools like a junior high will have three activities right. in the afternoon and yeah. they yeah. have six. Yeah, you know. that, that's fair. So that's what I'm saying. And they have two gyms and mm -hmm. all of that that's they're dealing with. <coughs> okay. 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 I think Mr. Kemp just said we're 52 custodians. We're, we're currently 52 custodians short based on uh, 52. staff, based on recommended square footage cleaning or staffing. Did you say 52? 52. Yep. When we've been, that's been consistent. Yeah. We've been consistently yeah. short on on the staffing for um, for custodial district wide. Uh, Do we even have, we have all our teachers? We have all our teachers cleaning classrooms and cleaning bathrooms, and I've been on and on and on about this. And I've asked them to send it to me, and I've sent to Mr. Um, Broski the list of all these these teachers. They shouldn't be expected to do that. They're expected to empty the trash and clean their classrooms, and simply because we don't have custodians, so either something's wrong with our model of how we're hiring custodians, but there's definitely a shortage. Yeah, I don't disagree. So I would, I, I would say this to the chair. Um, the, the biggest thing is here, the custodial staff, not only do they have to do internals, they have to do externals as yeah, well. And I openly do not think that's a good model. 
-hmm. So if once we get and we start building this budget and we get in and we get to a point where we think we're we're um, we're efficient, if we I would say that as we build it, there may be a potential for us to look at maybe either doing two things. You could outsource grounds, mm -hmm. and uh, that way we can hold someone accountable and that individuals can focus on the internal classrooms, and, and or we could try to hire. Uh, two teams to, to to address 50 facilities, but that's a lot of facilities to do. Wow. And um, so, I mean, crazy. we would have to run some some um, some numbers to figure out what's the, the the best model to do. But I want you to know that that's something I'm thinking about presenting to the board so that we can release some of the responsibilities for the custodial staff so they can focus on the internal versus the external. Because the external is a lot in summer. I think we addressed this last year. Didn't this come up last year where we were talking? Maybe it was Not two years the ago. Not internal and external. The grounds. It was yeah. the grounds that we yeah. talked well. about and maybe outsourcing or having just I a couple of teams it. that did it. Um, so we should look into the cost of that. Yes, ma'am. Then our it's custodians are just concentrating on the interiors. Well, the reasons that we are short 52, is it because of low pay or what? I think it's uh, I think it's a number of things. It's uh, the attractiveness of the position, the pay of the position, mm -hmm. um, uh, honestly, maybe our, our ability to, to fund it. I mean, yeah. it's... We don't it's, have that many allocations, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's I think it's, I think it's all of it. I mean, right. if we... It, I can tell you, if I opened up 10 positions today, you would fill potentially two. Right. I mean, it's, it's, they're hard to fill positions. That's why I was asking about that additional That's custodian. What, my understanding that that was that historically cutting. when the district made cuts, that was where we made cuts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I don't, I don't we, know what's correct. That's actually correct. It's not that we're short and can't right. necessarily get the positions. It's hard to fill these positions, yes, but we're we're 52 allocations short based on the recommended square footage cleaning sure. minimum right. from the state. And I think that's a result of having to make tough decisions years ago and cutting things down to one buck guy and, you know, uh, one, one, one guy, I mean, really, one buck guy. I won't give him one, one guy. We just made one guy. So, I mean, We're getting started. He wants another one. We do need to We need another this. bug guy. Yeah. So, well, we, yeah. so hopefully... Um, it's on a priority. Yeah. I mean, I got some other big tickets I got to deal that's, with. That's, that's not so, right. And, uh, and outsourcing the, you know, the, the, that's, that's a good idea, except right. for yeah. when you talked about athletic fields. I mean, that's <coughs> things that need to be yeah. done oh, yeah. today, that, that, and they're not coming right. until next Wednesday. Right. Right. Well, some, that's kind of where your athletic director comes yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They are very. Yeah. So through the chair, they don't, <laughs> they don't want these, anyone touching so, the Yeah, that's actually correct. Some of the coaches don't want anyone touching the The athletic directors want to do their own field. But they're different. And some do. Yeah. Well, Mr. Don't. Davis, we also have lots of openings in our custodials that are allocated that mm -hmm. aren't being filled. I agree. Even though we have tons of applicants, from what Mr. Broski sent me, there's tons of applicants, and the principals don't seem to get to it. So, you know, I think that we're just in allowing the teachers to clean the classrooms. It's not a priority anymore to hire these custodians. But right. what Mr. Broski sent me was there was lots of applicants for those and, positions. And, and through the chair, I would say, Ms. Piva, uh, I've addressed some of that with some of our leaders. The other issue is that some of the applicants have some right. some, that too, yeah. some checks that, that we wouldn't hire that individual. But it's, I mean, but we got to get someone. Mm -hmm. so, well, five, five of those positions you know, are due. <laughs> and so what I see happening with those positions are that uh, at any time of the year, if that individual can make more money somewhere else, they leave. They, yeah. they, they leave. Five. And so five of the eight <laughs> current positions are all just posted and just mm. ended their posting Fine. minimum. Mm. In the junior high school model, we will reduce a CTE teacher by point one two eight. That's a planning period by out have a teacher ret retiring, so that will not be extended back to the school. Um, we will be adding some ESC instructional staff members and some ESC supports, and then you'll see that um, Oakley Junior High School AP is added as well. In the high school model, wait, go ahead. What? It says okay. reduced LPN RN point eight. Yeah, I have to go. What back. is that about? That is a nurse that serves an ESC student, and oh. they are articulated at high school. Okay. Reduced it from high school and added it to the. Okay, just one because we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So they're following the students. Can I ask a question sure. on the elementary model? Sure. Um, are we? Does this? include keeping with the decisions made last year at Lamar Island Elementary with um, inclusion? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're sticking with that. <laughs> yep.
16 and that's driven by um, uh, IEP teams anyway, so it'll tell us who, who needs additional services. Okay. High school will be adding, uh, we'll be adding 4.8 instructors, um, <laughs> actually 7.8 you know, 7 instructional staff members, and we'll be adding some supports as well, one school counselor. Uh, the media specialist will be d uh, deleting because, as we talked about a couple of years ago, we, uh, we have a school that had two. One is retiring. And we said once that individual retired, then the school will move to a, a media tech. Would and that's every few years now. Mm -hmm. Now, they always have the availability to, uh, if they find mm -hmm. money within their budget and create it with their right. schedules to add that back. That's to their desire. Where are we adding the 4.8 teachers or the three basic teachers? Um, those two teachers. And where's the other one? Uh, one at Keystone. One at Keystone. One at Keystone. Is it a music teacher? That's up to uh, band director. It's, uh, I think it's art, art, music. art music. It's uh, will be up to uh, their team. They'll meet together, principal, to figure out the actual need. Great. <laughs> she did that. That position. That was one of my Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And I, I think it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, and it's, we're it's, adding the media tech to Ridgeview High School. Yes, ma'am. And replace to make sure they have two like everyone else consistency. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, and um, so uh, in an alternative, you can go to the next one. Sorry, in the alternative pathways, we will be uh, adding two instructors, basic allocations, uh, some more ESC instructional staff members, one support, and then we will. They have an interventionist currently, and we're transitioning that to a dean of school culture. So is this all Bannerman, or is this Bannerman and Flyken? No, this is all Bannerman. All Bannerman. All Bannerman. All Bannerman. Dean uh, is one it Bannerman? Virtual. One instructional play virtual. The dean is it Bannerman? Yes, ma'am. It's Bannerman? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then overall, do I have another one? Let's see what else I have. So overall, this is uh, <laughs> it's, it's adding a total of uh, $2 million to, to our budget, uh, but our projections show that, um, that it would almost be cost neutral if we can get the, uh, the seats and the butts in the seats. And uh, we'll be able to serve our students in a positive manner. The good thing is, is that we're growing instructionally, and um, we're adding a little bit of supports back based on needs, and we're making some positions uh, holistic, which they should have been holistic in the first place. So we're getting better every year with this, and um, we'll continue to um, to review. Now, one thing we will do is we will bring in the district allocation. And last year we had around 15 positions that we brought to have for um, for class size. We will bring that again in uh, in April, so that we will have uh, a number of seats just in case numbers increase, mm -hmm. and we'll, we will work with uh, Miss Bays and Mr. Connor and Miss pa and Dr. Piva to identify doctor. class and uh, doctor. Your doctor. Doctor. Nostra. 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 Nostra Piva to determine where these. Uh, Nostra. Where, Nostra. 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 Just determine where they. <laughs> Determine, so where, they, determine the, where they go. When the district comes, that's when we'll see like the reading specialists, the counselors. Actually, and all of that. Uh, through the chair, we have that ready to give to you today. Um, the biggest thing is I can give it to you today, but I openly probably need 48 hours to make sure it's solid. Um, if you want it today, you can have it. I don't forecast any changes, but we will bring it to this month. But um, we'll we, be voting on it. Next yes, ma'am. You will. So if you want it today, you can have it. But just know that it changes. may adjust in the next forty-eight hours. Well, if Not you it, adjust we have, anything, we will send you an just email. Let us know, yeah. but yes, ma'am. Well, that we, way we, we can, can do go that. ahead and get it. We can do that. And through the chair, know that we have a lot going on right now. Yeah. So, uh, hey, this is a great package, and I don't think we've had one this pleasant in I don't years. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I know, I know you're probably not 100% happy with it, but no, I, I it, saw it yesterday. It's, it's, I it's, very, it it's, it's much better than. I mean, we've had years where, you know, 60 teachers. <laughs> you know, Victor, would you like to have one, sir? So, I have this is okay, okay. relatively painless. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. <laughs> so and, and so that is overall. I have to move my stuff out of the way. That's seat. No, you're good. That's seat thirteen. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, and thank you to you and Bonnie and our team for working this. Good job, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just want to let you all know, as part of your packet, you have a document, several documents. So as you're looking through it, you have the regular allocation document, but you also have a sheet similar to this. This mm -hmm. pretty much gives you an idea of exactly where the changes are summarized by 
by school so you can go across and link it back to the detailed allocation document and it has a cost associated with it as well. That's wonderful. So thank you. Susan, so you thank know, you. You know, That's so you can refer back to it immediately to see where those In past years That's sometimes it's just been difficult to try to right, exactly. put it all so together. All in one place. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Good job. All right, that was uh, C13. <laughs> Any questions, please call me, reach out. We'll be able to problem solve with you. If you see some things that, that may need to revisit, let us know. We'll, we'll try our best to do so, to be consistent. C14 is our monthly financial reports for, for January 2019. C15 is our budget amendments for the month of October through January 2019. And they're identified by each month. C16 is uh, non-sufficient funding write-off permission. We only have $25 this month. So. Yeah. That just amazes me. This is so a great job to your team. So much better. You know I always look at that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> it needs to be so big. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction there. We'll get our 25 bucks somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have a approval of the 1920 payroll calendars as well. Yes. Nothing change. There are no significant changes to the calendars. The one, right? That's correct. You know, every, um, the 15th and the 30th. 15th, 30th. Got to get every two weeks. They got a new system. They won't do it. I mean, every Friday. But they won't do it yet. So we're still withholding one. We're going to try to get that one every Friday. Two weeks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're doing good, though. Uh, C18 is deletion of uh, certain items. This is, um, you know, old school ice machine makers, meat slicers. We don't slice meat anymore. Laptops. Anybody want a camcorder, projector? A total in the closet. Yeah. A total of $241,000 of, of outdated uh, equipment that we do not use. We will sell. C19 is bid renewal process. The first one is for electrical uh, construction uh, countywide. The final review of three years which is Parts Electric and um, Premier uh, T&M, I believe. The second one is a uh, epoxy floor services for, uh, for our district. This is a one-year agreement for a three-year renewal. And that is, um, I think, Ronald Lance Tile. And the next one would be to, um, it is connected to water and uh, wastewater treatment. This is a renewal for the next three, uh, and renewal for the next three years. And this is, um, I think it's twofold water energies will be those, and they've been a long time, long time partner with us. C20 is pre qualifications for our contractors, those individuals who wish to continue or work with us moving forward. C21 is the substantial completion of Fleming Island Ace. Oh. <laughs> Final completion. When I saw that, when I was reviewing <laughs> no, the right? agenda, I thought, I mean, go good. <laughs> well, maybe you yeah, use we're, it. We're good. We're good. Are we having a ribbon cutting Do we have a date right. set for anything? Should, yes. we, we're waiting as soon as we get it. Could we uh, have we a will. ceremony? We will. Friends. Everybody at this table in this room will be invited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we can say, here you go. Thank you so very much. A longest process ever. I laughed out loud when I was reviewing the agenda. I said, oh my gosh. Oh. Is it coming back one more time or is that it, Doc? That's substantial completion. You'll get final. Final completion. Oh, so dear. one more. We got one more. Uh, C22 is substantial completion of Keystone High School Renovation for Science Lab. That's oh, it. So we finally got that done. Gas water got it up and running. So we're, we're, that's going to be great for school to use. Yeah, no, right. Finally, they'll be excited to, to use those coming on board. Was a project. Also, C23 is Keystone Heights Elementary Parent Pickup Contract Award. Fantastic. Um, finally, we got that. That is um, going to be awarded as well. Fantastic. Great. And that is it. Wow. Okay. Anybody else would like to make any comments? Now is your chance. I have a comment. Mr. Bickner, oh, you got yes, you had it? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, the meeting oh, is okay. Wait, wait, wait. I have something and Susan oh. has something. Okay. Um, I'll go on back to the calendars. Um, I just wanted to bring every, you know, everyone's attention. As you know, we transitioned to Business Plus. Right. So um, what we've tried to do is um, be consistent with the calendars for payroll. However, um, for the teachers, the 10 month, I know Mary mentioned that we're getting five checks. They are getting five checks. But what we're doing, because of the system, the teachers will receive three checks on 6 5, June 5. 
one check on the um, June 15th. This is all of last next year. They have a whole year, and we promise we will um, communicate, them, communicate mm -hmm. with them so that they will they will know. And another check on June 30th. So we've straddled it across the month of June so that they'll have a check every every um, every pay date. Is so that three? Are we violating contract at all with that? No, I believe we spoke with Mr. We did. Rossi we had a conversation the other day. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I wanted to put that out there so everyone is aware. That's 2020, not 2020. 2020, yes, ma'am. Yeah, no. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. I, so yeah. yeah. right. I will send that out. I will send that out beginning yeah. of the year, next year, middle of the year, yeah, and sure. close to the end. Okay. So I just wanted to put that out there because that was the, sure. better model. the change that we had to make. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone else? I have a quick question. Oh, you want to oh do you want no, to no, do your own hold first? Because no. I was going to question that as well. <laughs> well, I spoke with Ruth Melton this morning about the um, mm -hmm. the resolution from Martin County, and I asked her um, her opinion on it and how many other districts have you know joined in with a resolution or a letter from the superintendent to the governor. I Just and it, it. It, it it's talking about instructional material because and the fact that they're you know, we purchased them for five years. Um, her recommendation was to have our superintendent have um, whoever is in charge of assessments and curriculum do an evaluation of the possible changes and see what the implications would be to our board um, to see how, how this would affect us. And then, you know, we don't have to move on it right this minute, but we should all have it on our radar that we might want. Like Kirk Browning sent a letter to the governor. Right. We might, you know, there was a letter you sent it's us. And, so we might want to to maybe yes, consider something. Yes, um, and I'm not saying we need to do anything or take any action, yeah. but right. um, I picked mine up last week, yes, when I, the week before when I was down here, so um, I yes, just wanted to bring this to our attention. And, and through the chair, right now, they have paused the, the math adoption process. Mm -hmm. Um, and we probably need to find some supplemental materials to help high school secondary for you know next year. But we're trying to figure out if we're actually going to get some funding. And uh, if we get some funding, we can truly help. And then so CTE is on deck now, and they postpone English language arts, which is great. That was the biggest headache I had. I wasn't I wasn't concerned with math because we actually do a decent job with what we we have mm -hmm. supplementally going now. Um, but I, I am concerned with English, so I'm yes. glad they they, um, they paused it. I will say that it's going to take years. It's going to take two years. Right. And um, I openly, you know, um, you know, well, I won't say that. We'll, well see how far Because of the financial impact that, that it can have on us, with oh, especially yeah. all the professional yeah. development we can't that we've done yeah. for teachers in training what we've already got or what's in place for mm -hmm. what we think we're getting. Yes, ma'am. Um, just we need to be mindful of the yes, finances. So. Do we yes, have funding for the consumables when it comes to math? I mean, so I know, like, our we, we currently have SEI so dollars that we okay. spend to, right. to address something. And, and we should still get our uh, instructional materials allocation. Mm -hmm. uh, the state has said that it's right Just now no it looks new like adoption. no new adoption. So it would be yeah. for growth and maintenance. Mm -hmm. so we'll yeah. That's good. Okay. Now, I would suggest in secondary that we possibly look for some math materials, and we've, we've adopted some things already, you guys, uh, in January, right. that we could possibly look at because secondary math is in need of some some structure. They're kind of sure. using multi, a lot of different materials uh, to get through. Right. Um, so we've kind of done a lot of legwork already, right. and just depending on how we want to finance that right. in the superintendent. Okay. And, and through the chair, the one thing about uh, we elected to do was Pearson was in secondary. They have committed mm -hmm. to no matter what changes in the next two years, they will go ahead and they will adjust uh, their techs. Uh, the problem is, is we want to train and then train and train, and we're right. chasing training. It's not fair to our teachers. So, but we've got to we've got to figure out some assistance for them. Well, and the cost of all of that training Agreed. too, and and their time. And time. Yeah. Time. And okay. it, it becomes frustrating. So. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay. No Anyone else? Then the meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank you.